We talked about pre-Islam. Let's talk about when Islam came and the rights of uh, the woman. Of course, the woman uh, can be a child. Uh, she can be a daughter, she can be uh, a mother, uh, she can be a wife, she can be multiple things. So let's begin with her uh, as, a, as an infant, uh, as a child and as an adolescent. What rights did Islam give uh, women that they did not have before that time? Actually, b before I, I talk about this, if, if a person reads the Qur'an from the beginning to the end, mm. you won't find differences between men and women when it comes to the orders and, and things like that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except for very specific issues. Uh, one of which, Ya ayyuhaladheena aman, o you who believe. It does not discriminate whether it's men or women, it's for all the believers. And some of the verses you would find stressing, well, in the muslimina wal muslimat, wal mu'minina wal mu'minat, that mm. indeed the Muslim, men and women, and the believers, men and women, and so on, just to stress the fact that when it comes to these attributes, there's no differences, and everybody has a responsibility when it comes to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't want to fall into the trap that women are something else or something different or they need basically some rights because they, their original status is they have no rights. Mm. In Islam, there's no such a thing because as you said, the woman is an infant, she's a child or a sister or a daughter or a mother, right? And all the different verses in the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that so talks about these different relationships, we would find that she is protected from uh, not just the moment that she was born, before even marriage occurs, because it's the rights of the child and mm. a woman as an infant, it's her right that her father and mother are being chosen in the proper way. Mm. That the father choose his wife, that she's going to be the mother for his children, and the mother and the guardian of the mother is to choose the righteous one, the one that has manners, because this is a relationship that the result of it is other human beings, that the goal of uh, such a relationship is to raise individuals to be true worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. So uh, this is a right that comes way before people get married. People get married on the face of earth for many reasons, but usually it's so selfish. Mm. People, they just get married because they like the other uh, partner and that's it. So they get married to take rather than right. give. Right. And mm. they don't think, not too many people, they think that this person will be the mother of my children. Mm. And the same thing for the wife. So this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that from us. Uh, when it comes to the infant, you know, when it comes to the child, uh, many different rights. But mm. one of which is that this child, since he or she are helpless, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided as a mercy from him uh, their nutrition without having to purchase it from anywhere. Mm. It's from the mother. And that's why fostering a child, this is, has rules in the religion of Islam, verses in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. And this is not an easy thing. The Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verses in it that talks about the issue of uh, suckling the child and so on. So this is definitely a, a basic right. And whether people would get to know the, the benefits of it, this is not the subject, but this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us. And this is the fairness of the religion of Islam. Yeah. Choosing a proper name, and this is for both men and women, to choose the proper name that uh, the child will be proud of when they grow up and something that would remind them of uh, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. I remember a story where uh, there was a girl, her name was uh, something, I'm not sure what the name was, but the Prophet ﷺ changed her name to Jamila, which means mm -hmm. beautiful. No, and that's her name, w w the name of it was something that is, uh, that means that she is not, uh, not quite beautiful. Mm. Uh, I, I don't recall the name, actually, it's, it's, a, it's a very common one, so it should be something that is, but it's on my tongue, but I cannot remember it. Mm. But this is true, and the Prophet ﷺ would change their names. Yeah. Uh, and this is this is something present in the names of men and women. Yeah, and that's the most important part of the story is not what her name was, but what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam changed right. it to, change it right. to Jamila, right. knowing the essence of women, that right. they want to be beautiful, so yeah. he gave her a beautiful name. Definitely. Alhamdulillah. And also, uh, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent, as it's mentioned in the Quran, that the Arabs at the time, they used to be ashamed as a result of having a girl, uh, a woman giving birth to a girl. They mm. would be ashamed of that. So can we say one of the rights uh, that Islam gave to infants was actually the right to live? Definitely. Mm. Because at, at certain parts of the world, not just in the Arab world, but different parts of the world also, when a man would, uh, you know, his wife would give birth to a girl, as it happened in the Arab world, they would bury her alive. Wow. Such a, a, a very, you know, treacherous uh, crime. But when we look at the society at the time, they didn't see it that way. Now, when we are at a certain time of age, we would see this as this is something very severe. 
But when any society would do a certain crime and get used to it, mm -hmm. and people would see it as a normal thing, people lose this uh, feeling that this is such a, an evil thing. They have a ilaf al masriya. That's right. Yes. To get used to the to the sin, and this is what's happening all over the world. Mm -hmm. Hundred years ago, certain sins to people was something that is so evil. But step by step, and this is the way and, and, and the, st the steps of shaitan, people will get used to it. And it became the norm. And now That's when right. you do the right thing, that becomes what's odd. Right. Mm -hmm. And even till today, some people that are sad when they have girls. Mm -hmm. you know, and this is something that is against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. The end of Surah Al-Shura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained that clearly. That it's the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives uh, whoever he wills, uh, boys, and he gives whoever he wills, girls, and he uh, combines them together, or he makes some people sterilized. And this is the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why we need to witness the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet so used to like the girls having birth to girls, because as the Prophet said, whoever have uh, two girls, and the hadith is, is more extended than this, whoever two girls, that he would raise them as uh, slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would be a shield for the person from the hellfire. So when we choose, we choose what saves us from the hellfire and to be kind to them and to be extremely kind to them because the Prophet sallallahu one of his last words, alayhi salatu wasalam, on the face of earth, he said, bin nisa'i mm. that take good care of women and not just wives, women in general, in large, all women, whether she's a, a young girl or a daughter or a sister, whatever there is, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants that from the men, the, the one that is physically stronger, you know, when it comes to relationships. Yes. Well, there's a very famous saying that says that women are half of the society. Uh, and we say that women are half of the society and they raise the other half. Your thoughts about that, Steve? Uh, actually, yes, this is some people say that women are half of the society or a little bit more, a little bit less. It depends what society that is. Mm. But we say as Muslims, actually, this is a wrong statement. Mm. Women are the whole society because they give birth to the other half. Yes, and they raise them too. Right. And giving birth to the other half, this is what have so much meanings to it and deep meanings to it. Mm. She's giving birth. That means she is the one that would receive the first love of the child. He's attached to the woman more. So she is given uh, to the child in the first stages of his life what would stay with him or her for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. That's why they say the beginning period of one's life, this is basically the, the time where it shapes the personality of the person. Yeah. Where does the, does the child get most of this from? From the mother, from definitely. The mother. So it's basically, it's raising the whole society to be righteous and to be good. And that's why when we see the status of the Muslims nowadays, the cure to all of our problems, again, is to fix our homes and the masajid. But basically, once if the women in any society are according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them, then know for sure definitely that the men also. Because mm -hmm. they are the one that raised the men. They mm -hmm. raised the men to be men and to be slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can say that they're really the backbone of society. Definitely. And that's why uh, this is such an important thing for our Muslim uh, sisters to know and to learn the deen of Islam because raising the children or taking care of their own selves or their own husbands and so on, this is not a matter of a cultural thing. Mm. This is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's making the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior. A woman would say, making the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior, this is jihad, this is fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, this is in our homes, to make the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior, because she's the one that is raising the men that would do the fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the struggle in different parts of the society to make the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior. Mm. How was the relationship of the Prophet sallallahu with his daughter? We know that he had four daughters. Yeah. Uh, all his sons uh, uh, passed away, but his daughters stayed. Three of them died in his lifetime. One died shortly after his death. So he was able to live with them uh, for a very long time. How was his relationship with his daughters? The Prophet sallallahu was the most kind to everyone especially those who are close to him. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he said to Aisha radiallahu anha, Ya Aisha, inna husna al-ahati min al-iman, that to be kind to those you know is part of al-iman. Mm. And he was referring to uh, a friend, or he was referring to the sister of Khadija radiallahu anha. So if that, to the sister of Khadija, the wife of the Prophet mm. the Prophet ﷺ said that. But about the ones that comes from his own uh, body, the ones that is his own, own flesh and blood. Definitely. 
And that's why the Prophet ﷺ was the best father. And that's what we need to learn as, as fathers and husbands and everything in our, our relationship. How the Prophet ﷺ dealt with his daughters. Uh, definitely such a, a beautiful thing. And there's so many different incidences that shows uh, the way the Prophet ﷺ with his daughters. One of which, when Fatima radiallahu anha uh, came to him one time, والسلام, he stood up for mm -hmm. his daughter. Right? And he embraced her. Right? This is how many people would do that instead of sitting down. You know, when you get to live with someone for, for so long, uh, you don't act formal towards them. Yeah. You're just too relaxed. And, and actually, the real uh, characteristics of the person shows with the ones that live with you longer. Yes. That's why if a person wants to know the, the real attributes or the real characteristics of a person, go see him at home. Mm. Because we can sit together and be extremely nice to you, extremely nice to, to me and, and things like this. But what are our status at home? When people are seeing us day and night. So the Prophet ﷺ would do that to his daughter Fatima uh, anha, And definitely this, this shows how the Prophet ﷺ would respect his daughter and would treat her such a way. The hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said about her and about uh, the other daughters and, and, and giving them uh, patience when they lose uh, a son, for example. When this is what happened to Zainab, the daughter of the Prophet ﷺ, when she lost a child. And the Prophet ﷺ ordering her to be patient and teaching us uh, from generation to, to the other, to say لِلَّهِ مَا أَخَذُ وَلِلَّهِ مَا أَعْطَى وَكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عِنْدَهُ بِأَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى فَلْتَصْبِرْ وَتَحْتَسِبْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that gave and the one that took. So seek the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be patient. Hmm. And he ordered her to be patient and so on. So uh, many cases definitely. SubhanAllah, uh, this is such an important issue, the issue of uh, the father-daughter relationship. Uh, I know a lot of sisters uh, living in our world today who say that I just wish that my dad would be kind to me. Because if my dad doesn't give me this affection and this love, I may need to go and get it from outside. Mm. I may need to go and get it from uh, a person who's at my college or a person who, who is at work or a person over the internet. Right. Especially for sisters, uh, especially the younger sisters, they may not need the, the physical uh, affection from, from a man, but they do need the emotional affection from a man. And if they don't get it from their fathers, it could be, of course it's wrong, but it could be an excuse for them to go out and, and get it from... Uh, and definitely this is one of the reasons why so many evil things that happens as a result of fathers and mothers are not taking care of their children well enough. Mm. And this is, you touched a very important point, because as fathers and mothers, we should, and people might take this from me and they say, what are you talking about? Mm. Uh, girls should be treated slightly different than boys mm. in the family. Both, they should not be beaten as a way of causing harm and pain to them. Mm. And that's why when it comes to dealing with daughters, especially the daughters, a person should be very careful mm. not to humiliate them by any form of a physical uh, punishment. That's why a, a girl, she, the, we should never ever, uh, especially when it comes to painful, uh, this is definitely forbidden whether it's for boys or girls, mm. but to make sure that we raise them, even if they do something wrong, there are different forms of punishments, and the punishment comes the last level of uh, fixing a problem. Mm. But being kind and being close to them and being there for them and, and fulfilling their desires and and, and, and getting to teach them the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's definitely something that comes with gentleness and comes with decency, does not come with, with being, uh, uh, you know, harsh and so on.